How does a small country build a shield in space? This isn't science fiction. It's real, and it's happening right now over Israel. To survive, they had to build something that had never existed before. Today, we're going to see how they did it. Welcome to War Tech Zone. The world is full of missiles. Big ones, fast ones, ones that can fly between continents. For Israel, this is not a future problem. It is a daily reality. Look at a map. You will see a small country, surrounded by neighbors with powerful armies. For decades, rockets have flown into its cities. Simple defenses are not enough. You cannot hide from these weapons. You must stop them. But how? A normal missile flies too high and too fast. By the time you hear it coming, it is often too late. Israel had one choice, innovate or be destroyed. They needed a new idea. They needed to see the threat earlier and stop it much, much farther away. This led to a two-part invention. First, they built a super eye to see everything. Second, they built a super fist to punch the threat in space. Together, they form a shield that is changing warfare forever. Let's look at the eye first. The super eye, seeing it all from space. If you are going to stop a missile, you need to see it launch. You need to see it when it is just a fire on a launch pad, hundreds of miles away. For that, you need the best view possible. You need a view from space. This is where the OFEC satellites come in. OFEC is an Israeli word. It means horizon. The name is perfect. These satellites push Israel's horizon to the edge of the earth. They are Israel's own eyes in the sky. Why is this so important? Think about it. Most countries share intelligence with their friends. Israel has friends, yes, but in a moment of crisis, you cannot wait for a phone call from another country. You need your own information. You need it right now. The OFEC satellites give Israel that power. They are a declaration of independence. They say we will watch over our own land. The latest OFEC satellite is like a superhero. It doesn't just take a pretty picture of the Earth, it sees in incredible detail. From hundreds of miles in space, it can see a truck moving on a desert road. It can see the heat from a building. It can watch a military base day and night. This constant watching is the key. It's about seeing patterns. Maybe trucks bring fuel to a hidden site. Maybe soldiers move equipment in the night. The satellite sees this activity and sends the data home. Computers, analysts look at the data. They are looking for one thing, the signs of a missile being prepared for launch. This is the first layer of the shield. It is a layer of knowledge. It turns a mystery into a picture. It turns a guess into a fact. Before a single enemy missile lifts off, Israel often knows it is there. This changes everything. It gives the most precious gift in war, time. But time alone does not stop a missile. You need action. This is where the second part of the shield comes in. The super fist, the space punch. Knowing a missile is coming is one thing. Stopping it is another. You need a weapon that can reach out and kill the threat. For a normal anti-missile system, the fight happens inside the sky, inside our atmosphere. That is too close. It's too dangerous. Debris from the explosion rains down on cities. Israel asked a radical question. What if we could stop the missile outside of Earth? What if we could fight the battle in space? Their answer is the Arrow 3. Forget everything you know about missiles that explode. The Arrow 3 works on a completely different idea. It's not a bomb. It's a bullet. Its job is not to explode near the target. Its job is to hit the target directly, to smash into it at over 10,000 miles per hour. Think of it like this. It's the world's most accurate and most destructive game of darts. But the dartboard is another missile, and both are moving faster than jets high above the planet. How high? We're talking about space. The Arrow 3 missile flies up over 60 miles high. Some reports say it can go over 100 miles high. At that height, there is almost no air. There is no weather. It is just the cold black silence of near space. Here, the physics are pure. There is nothing to slow down the Arrow 3 or its target. 
it becomes a contest of speed, computing, and precision. The Aero 3 missile launches like a normal rocket, but the top part, called the kill vehicle, is a technological miracle. It has its own brain, its own eyes, and its own tiny rocket thrusters. After the big rocket pushes it high into the sky, this kill vehicle separates. It is now on its own hunting trip. Its eyes are advanced heat sensors. In the freezing cold of space, an enemy warhead is a bright, hot signature. The kill vehicle locks on to that heat. Then its computer brain takes over. It uses those small thrusters, puff, 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 to move left, right, up, or down. It's making tiny, perfect adjustments to its path. The goal is a direct collision, not an explosion nearby, a full-on, head-on crash. This is called hit to kill. When the Arrow 3's kill vehicle hits the enemy missile, the energy is unbelievable. It's like a speeding train hitting another train. The enemy warhead is completely vaporized. It is turned into tiny, harmless dust. Because this happens in space, the dust just floats away or burns up later. Nothing dangerous falls on the people below. This is the genius of the Arrow 3. It's a clean kill, far from home. But it has one big problem. Space is huge. How does this bullet know exactly where to aim? How does it find that one hot missile in the massive darkness? This is where the magic happens. This is where the super eye talks to the super fist. The magic handshake. From eye to fist. The OFEC satellite and the Arrow 3 are a team. One sees, the other destroys. The connection between them is the secret sauce of Israel's shield. Let's walk through what happens step by step in a real alert. Step 1. The watch. An OFEC satellite is always on duty, scanning a region. Its sensors pick up a sudden, massive heat bloom on the ground. This is the infrared signature of a rocket engine igniting. In a fraction of a second, it knows. It is not a car fire. It is a missile launch. Step 2. The first signal. The satellite instantly sends a signal down to Earth. It is not a slow email. It is a lightning-fast data burst. The message is simple. Launch detected. Here are the exact coordinates. Here is its direction. Step 3. The ground brain. This signal goes to command centers in Israel. Powerful computers receive the satellite data. They also get data from ground radars which are now searching for the missile. They combine all this information. In less than a minute, they know the missile's path. They know where it is going. They calculate the perfect spot in space to intercept it. Step 4. The order. A command is sent to an Aero 3 battery. Soldiers, press a button. The Aero 3 rocket launches with a roar. It screams into the sky pointed not at the missile, but at the point in space where the missile will be. Step 5. The update. As the Aero 3 flies, it is still getting updates. Radars on the ground track both the enemy missile and the Aero 3. They send constant course corrections to the Aero 3's kill vehicle. It's like a friend guiding you. A little more to the left, now a bit up. Perfect. Stay on course. Step 6. The handoff. In its final moments, the Aero 3's kill vehicle separates. Its own heat sensor turns on. It looks into the cold void of space and finds the hot dot of the enemy warhead. Now, it stops listening to the ground. Its own brain and its own thrusters take full control. It makes the final, tiny adjustments. Then, silence. A flash of light in the high darkness seen only by satellites. A direct hit. The threat is gone. This entire process, from launch to kill, can happen in just a few minutes. It is a ballet of technology happening at impossible speeds. It extends Israel's border from its coastline into the edge of space itself. The shield is not a wall. It is a bubble of information and action. Is it really unbeatable? The tough questions. No system is perfect. People often ask, can this shield be beaten? The main threat is called a saturation attack. This means firing not one missile or two, but 50 or 100 at the same time. The idea is to overwhelm the defense, like throwing too many bottles for one person to catch. Could this work against Israel? It's a serious challenge. Each Arrow 3 interceptor is very expensive. An enemy could try to launch more missiles than Israel has interceptors. But Israel planned for this. 
The Arrow 3 is not the only layer of defense. It's the top layer for the biggest, longest range threats. Below it, there is another system called David's Sling. It handles medium range rockets and cruise missiles. And below that, the famous Iron Dome. Iron Dome handles the short range rockets that fly from nearby areas. This is called a multi-layered defense. Think of it like a castle. Arrow 3 is the outer wall far away. David's Sling is the main gate. Iron Dome is the inner wall. If some attackers get past the outer wall, the inner layers are still there, ready to fight. Another question is about new missiles. What about hypersonic missiles that fly five times the speed of sound, or missiles that can change chorus in flight, called maneuverable missiles? This is the constant race between sword and shield. Israel is already working on the next arrow system, often called Arrow 4. Its goal is to be faster, smarter, and able to kill these new, more dangerous threats. The OFEX satellites are also getting better, with new cameras and computers that use artificial intelligence to spot threats even faster. The big picture. What this means for the world. Israel built this shield out of pure necessity. They had no other choice. But what they created is changing military strategy for the entire world. For the first time in history, a nation has a working defense against long-range ballistic missiles. It proves that it is possible. Other powerful countries are watching. They are now rushing to build their own versions of space-based sensors and space-based interceptors. This marks a major shift. Warfare is no longer just about the land, sea, and air. Now it is about the near space domain, the region just above our atmosphere. The country that controls that high ground has a massive advantage. It also creates a powerful form of peace. This technology is a deterrent. That means it stops an attack before it even starts. If an enemy knows their expensive, powerful missiles will just be shot down in space, they are less likely to launch them in the first place. The shield creates stability by making attack seem pointless. Of course, there are worries. Some fear this is the first step toward putting real weapons in space, leading to a new, scary arms race. That is a real debate for our future. For now, the story is clear. A small nation, facing huge threats, used its brains and courage to build a dome of silicon and steel over its head. They built a super eye to see danger from hundreds of miles away. They built a super fist to punch that danger in the face at the edge of space. They connected them with lightning-fast computers. It is a shield not made of magic, but of human genius. It is real. It is working today, and it is one of the most incredible stories of technology and survival in our time. If this real-world tech story amazes you, please support our channel. Hit the like button right now. It really helps War Tech Zone grow. And subscribe to see more stories about the real weapons and systems that are shaping our world. Let us know in the comments below. Do you think this kind of missile shield makes the world safer, or does it just push the battlefield into space? Thank you for watching. Stay curious.